Hi there. So over the last couple of weeks, I've gotten some great feedback from all of you on the content that they would like to see in upcoming videos. And one of the comments that's come up a couple times is about the dynamic input tool for Alteryx. So I've put together a demo. I've covered the three main areas uh, where I've used the tool, and that's in uh, dynamic file input, the ability to substitute a different where clause, and uh, substitute parameters in a SQL stored procedure. So those are the three I'm covering. If, if you're only interested in the SQL where and stored procedure, I've put some some bookmarks, a table of contents in the comment section to this video so you can skip ahead to those parts. So what I'm going to do is go through the three items here uh, one by one. I'm going to show how I've built them now and then quickly rebuild them. So starting with the dynamic uh, file input, it starts out with a directory tool. So if you go to the in-out menu, uh, you'll use a directory tool as input to the dynamic input tool. And basically all the directory input tool does is it gives you the directory, of course, as the name implies, of where the files are located. And uh, then you can specify an extension or you could just do star dot star and take all of the, the files in that directory. It defaults to having the include subdirectories checkbox unchecked. So you have to check it if you want to include subdirectories. In this case, I have the file sitting on in my C drive on a temp folder just for demonstration purposes in, in, in a subfolder called files. And then there are three subfolders underneath that, a folder A, B, and a C. But I, I just leave the directory at the temp and files level and then give it the extensions that I want to go for. The output of that directory tool has several attributes about the files and the folders that are in that path. Of course, the full path will be there, the directory, the file names, and some dates around the attributes for those files will be provided also. That's going to feed into the dynamic input tool, and the dynamic input tool is over on the developer menu here. Uh, so dynamic input tool right there. So this tool has a uh, two different settings that need to be configured. The first is a template, and if I could read them that, I would call it a sample of the files that you're gonna bring in, just one sample. So if I click the edit button here and go find the files in the subfolders here, I'll expand the dropdown so you can see C temp files folder A. I'm just gonna give it one of the files that I'm gonna bring in, and that sets sort of the sample or the template that shows the columns or the fields that are going to be part of the uh, dynamic input because I'm going to be bringing in nine files all together in this example. So that, that sample, that template has to be set. And then the second option is to choose what we're going to do. Are we going to read a list of data sources or are we going to modify a SQL query? I'm going to save the modify a SQL query for the second part right now. I'm just reading from data sources and I'm going to just take the full path that was listed here in the dynamic in the uh, directory tool. I do have the ability to append a suffix. So what that means is I can add uh, letters or characters onto the end of a file name, or I can add them to the beginning of a file name. Why I might want to do that is in some cases, times when I work in with financial data, a lot of the files or the SQL tables that are historical files or tables will have the year appended to the end of the file or table name. So say, for example, I want to go all the way back to 2001 and look at the financial records for that year. There could be a table or a file that contains just that year's data in it. Uh, if I wanted to pull in more than one, like say I wanted to pull from 2001 all the way to the current year or the previous year, I'm pulling in 17 files, then I can just give it that, uh, append those characters onto the end of the file name and bring it in. I also have the ability to change the file or table name itself as part of the input. In that case, I, I may not have a directory tool attached to this. I may have a list of what the file names are. Uh, I could use wildcards in there if I wanted to. Uh, that might make, might make more sense if I'm doing it that way. In this case, all I'm going to do is change the entire file path because I'm getting it from the directory tool and it's listing all of the files for me. Uh, and as you can see here, all nine of them are listed. 
All right, so I've got those two options set or, or item set because they're required, the, the sample template and the data source. And when I run this workflow, then what I'm gonna get out of it is uh, the files, I have nine of them, you can see here, and uh, the fields that are inside each of those uh, each of those files gets loaded uh, in. So in essence, it's basically going to each file, loading it in, and then passing the data along to the workflow. Okay, so let's let's rebuild this quickly so you can see it uh, in action here. So I'm going back to the in-out menu. We're going to take the directory tool. We'll drop it over here. I'm going to disable the other containers here so they don't run as part of what I'm doing. All right, so uh, I said that <clears throat> this data is sitting in uh, the C drive on this computer. So C, then I'm going to temp, and then I'm going to... Uh, the files folder and I'm not going to go any another layer down in the hierarchy I'm just going to leave it there and then I'm going to change the asterisk uh, dot asterisk or star dot star here so we'll go through and we'll do star dot CSV here and then I need to check the box to include subdirectory since I need the subfolders that are sitting under that particular uh, directory all right, so from there, I'm I'm actually just going to run it real quick. So we'll bring a browse in, drop it down, and just run that just to make sure I'm getting out what I think I'm getting. The full path is in there. Uh, and then we'll go over to the developer menu, and we'll take in the dynamic input. That's it. We'll drop it there. All right, and uh, now I have to give it the template or a sample file that it's going to use for each file that it uh, in, that it imports. So we'll just take that file from the directory here, the very first one, and we'll open that and see that the data is coming in just fine. So we'll say, okay, that looks good. And we're going to read from the full path of that directory input tool there. And we're not going to change a file or table name. We're going to change the entire path since it's giving me the full path of start of that. Uh, input there. And then we'll just go to the dynamic input tool and we'll add a browse after and we'll run our workflow and make sure that it's pulling the data in as we expect it to be pulled in. Looks good. I've used this tool before. I just had a conversion job that I worked on uh, about a month and a half ago where we had um, over a hundred files that we had to pull in there. It was all financial data. And basically the 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 finance team that was working on it was exporting data from the old system and just dropping it into a folder on a network share. And then the Alteryx workflow was just taking those files in, reading the data off of them in a huge batch, and then moving them over to an archive directory once they had been uh, imported and converted. So that that worked out really well, uh, f you know, for doing conversions and being able to pull those files in. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll put that in a container and shrink it down. So now that we've done the dynamic input tool for a uh, directory and files, let's switch over to using it inside uh, or for SQL queries, using it for uh, where statements and, uh, and stored procedures. So we'll, we'll re reactivate and enable this example here. And um, in this case, I don't have a directory tool that's inputting data. What I've used here is a text input tool. So uh, this tool here. And uh, I've just given it a, a field called color and then I've got three items, red, blue, and yellow. And what the query does inside the dynamic input is it's going to the AdventureWorks data warehouse and uh, which is, is just a freely available Microsoft data warehouse sample and uh, it's going to one table up the products table and it's going to filter for those three colors and then pull pull them into uh, pull them into the browse tool or into the workflow once it's done so the setup of course has to have the same two items there has to be a template here or a sample but in this case I'm not giving it a sample file I'm going to give it the actual query that it's going to run now there's one trick in this the the ol uh, OLEDB database type has to be used, not ODBC. I've tried to use ODBC and it, it doesn't work in the WHERE clause. It doesn't uh, recognize that the WHERE clause is part of the query. Uh, the same goes for stored procedures. It needs to be an OLEDB 
uh, type connection to the database. So I have that going, and then uh, I have a very simple SQL query. And uh, you know, the SQL editor here isn't that uh, gorgeous, but you can tell uh, just by looking at it. There's the select statement, and then the from. And um, here's my where clause. So I'll just break that out so you can see it a little bit clearer. So my my where statement here just says where the color is red, basically. Okay, so we'll leave that the way it is. So I'm gonna click refresh here just to make sure that the query I built actually works and that uh, the template or the sample that I'm going to give the workflow is pulling in the fields that I think it's gonna pull in. So it does, it looks fine. We would switch, uh, read, read a list of data sources. We're gonna change it to modify a SQL query. And um, this is initially blank, so we would have to add it uh, to, to that tool and then set it up. And here, all I'm doing, this is the drop down that if you're not using an OLEDB connection, will be blank if you hit the drop dropdown. Uh, it was blank when I was using ODBC. So it pulls in the query just fine. I'll tell it that the text I need to replace is red, it is the, the part of the text at the end. And then um, I'm going to replace the field color. And this drop down corresponds to my text input tool. Uh, that's the field that's in the text input tool. If I had more than one field in the text input tool, it would be displayed here and I could choose it. All right, so that's that's saved and now I can run it. And when I run it, it's actually gonna run three times and you can sort of tell it did it quickly, but you can see that it's running once for the color blue, again for the color red and a third time for the color yellow. So let's uh, shrink this down, or let's disable it, and then uh, let's rebuild what I did. So text input tool, and uh, we're gonna give this uh, column name, uh, the column name color, and then we're going to do red, uh, blue, and uh, yellow as part of, as the three, the three fields that I, the, th the three items that I want to be replaced in the where clause. All right, then we're gonna go back over to our developer tab here, and we'll take our dynamic input output tool. And again, I need to give it the template of what I'm gonna pull in. So uh, it's going to be an OLEDB connection here, and I get the lovely SQL editor. Uh, it, the data that I want is just sitting inside this uh, AdventureWorks database here. So we can quickly snag this information and uh, and place it in there. In fact, to make this go a little bit faster, what I'll do is we'll take we'll take it from the old version uh, that I was working with, and uh, we'll just copy it and paste it in there. That way, I don't have to rebuild the whole thing. So let's just copy it out of there, disable that, and then replace it in here. Okay. I'll just test the query real quick, make sure it doesn't give me any errors. That looks good. When it comes back then I should be able to refresh the query and see that it comes through. Looks fine. And then change it from read a list of data sources. We wanna modify a SQL query. And then I'm gonna to go to the add menu and I'm gonna choose SQL update where clause. And uh, there's the drop down. Make sure that the item appears in here. If it doesn't appear in here, you probably have the wrong connection or your where clause isn't set up correctly uh, inside your SQL script. And then it's going to replace the word red and with the color field that it's taking from this text input tool. So we'll go OK. Uh, click off of it there, and then we'll just add a browse to the end of this. And we'll go ahead and run run the uh, workflow and you can sort of see it ran it three three separate times once for each color that it pulled through all right looks looks the way that i would expect it to look we'll make that its own container and disable it and then we'll go on to the last uh, example here so this last one has to do with uh, stored procedures it's uh ends up being a pretty powerful way of doing uh of doing of using the dynamic tool if you're using stored procedures so the layout's very similar. I have a text input tool. I'm bringing in different colors this time, uh, black, silver, and white. And uh, the setup, uh, again, have to give it a template from the database, but I'm gonna choose update a stored procedure rather than choosing update aware clause. Okay, so let's let's disable it and then rebuild. So we'll go back to the in out menu, choose a text input, 
and I'm going to do color again here. This time we'll do black, silver, and white. And then we'll take the dynamic input tool from the developer menu here, attach it to the end. And uh, same thing, I have to give it a, a, a full stored procedure. They're pretty easy to build. They're not too difficult here. It's, it's, <laughs> it's uh, one, one very simple line of code in all of this. In fact, uh, just so I can show it to you, I'm, I'm not gonna copy it out of there. We'll go back and we'll, we'll edit and do the, do the full build. So for stored procedures, it ends up being pretty simple because um, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to choose that AdventureWorks database here. That's the one that, that I'm interested in. We'll choose stored procedures. And I only have one stored procedure in there uh, now. And uh, the stored procedure inside SQL actually takes a variable character parameter. It's, uh, it's saying that it's a string data type here, which is just fine. The only thing we need to remember to do is put single quotes around it. So I'm actually going to make it blue because that's not one of the colors that's in my list. So I want to prove to you that it's actually doing what I'm saying it's doing here. So um, I'm going to do it as blue and um, we'll click OK. And then we can click the refresh button just to make sure that the stored procedure is functioning properly and that when the dynamic input tool goes to validate that it actually gets the sample template correct. So that's good. Change the read a list of data sources to modify a SQL query. And then we'll add, uh, add from the dropdown SQL update stored procedure. OK, so add that to the list. So again, found the stored procedure is fine. It knows that uh, blue in single quotes is the parameter that we're updating or the value we're updating and the parameters color. All of that looks good. And then from our input tool, our text input, we're going to take the uh, color value and replace blue with that color value. All right. So let's click over to the end and add a browse after and then just run it and see if we can notice it running it three times. Yeah, I could sort of tell. All right, so click on the end and we'll see I entered black as the replace or blue as the replacement value and black, silver and white uh, are the are the uh, values coming from the text input. And so we see that there's black, silver and white listed in here, which is exactly what I would expect. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. Uh, I think that gives you a good overview of the three main uses. There are, of course, uh, two others, I believe, uh, actually three other different things you could do uh, in, the, in the dynamic input as part of a SQL query, which I'm not going to cover here. But you do have the options to do spatial filters and replace a string uh, as well. That is a, a really quick overview of the dynamic input tool. There's a ton of things you can do with it. Uh, I haven't even begin to explore all the vast areas you could go into with it, but that gets you started. As usual, please leave a comment if you have one, any feedback and anything else that you want me to cover in the video, that'd be helpful. Drop a like also, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it already. Thanks.